Hello my friends. Today I want to teach you how to make a gothic arch. I had a recent request on my website if I could make uh, the tutorials that I usually do or had done it in the past and my son has kind of been after me for several years to try out YouTube. I haven't really made any videos since I taught online prior to my stroke. So I guess in a way this is kind of like a testing the waters again type of thing and gothic arches are one of my favorite things uh, that I like to make. Now the gothic arches um, that I've recently made since January are kind of of a springy theme and um, that's probably what I would say Today will be the same type of theme because it's that time of the year and it's a beautiful day here where I am. We're going to get near 60, so that's been the warmest in 2019. Here's a few ideas for you. Um, in 2006, I had a Gothic Arch Challenge blog. And a lot of my artist friends and I would have a different theme each week. And it was really a lot of fun, but it was really a lot of work as well. Uh, and I do actually miss making them. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if I can get into that again. Um, you can make them into books. You can make them into cards. Um, and there's not quite... Uh, set size. This is the standard that most people see. I've had this template since 2006 when I did my first exchange and it's done on a cardboard so it's nice. I just pull it out of my box when I want to make something. And this is the same but it's a little bit narrower and it's been extended. And I'll try to have a uh, link to the template below for you. Now to save time what I've done is I've pre-cut um, my base and what I want to use and I kind of picked out what I wanted to use ahead of time so I'm not going through boxes of stuff and looking. So we're going to go with kind of a green and beige and brown uh, theme because I'm kind of going off of this little accent that I have. And I've already picked out my embellishments which are going to be buttons, this flower, most likely. I'm not going to change my mind. Now for glues, I just recently last fall started using this glue because I attended a card class with a girlfriend and uh, my right hand is affected by my stroke. I don't have total feeling in it. Um, so this really works well for me because I can position and guide the glue on. This is my absolute favorite. I've been using it since I started scrapbooking in 1998-1999 and what I love about it is the amount of glue that they give you, sorry about that, but it's also got a chisel point so you can get pretty well into spots that you might not be able to on other things. Um, this, I just bought a pack of these because it goes a long way. This is another one of my favorite glues. This is E6000. Uh, they have it in many colors now, but I still like it in the clear, transparent. It's very toxic, very smelly, but it's what I basically glue anything that's an embellishment that's made out of metal buttons, things that you really want to stick and hang on to. Walmart has the best price on this. I think I can get it for about $2.59 there. Uh, Joann's it's close to five six dollars so just a little tidbit for you. Now 
Uh, one of the other things I wanted to mention too is that I have a beautiful camcorder that I bought in the late 2000s and I can't find any software online that's compatible anymore with it. I, I guess they just want you to shell out money every couple of years. So I did some research on YouTube that I can use my smartphone to make videos. And so that's what I'm doing right now and hopefully it'll kind of sort of work. Um, like I said, I'm just testing the waters because my son really has kind of pushed me about this and I've spent the last couple months since January researching it and I really want to have fun and it's just a good way for me to get my confidence back since my stroke. So anyhow, um, so in today's video I have uh, this base, as I said, and I pre-cut it. It's a green uh, pattern paper. Now, I've also taken a paper whimsy image, and I've pre-paper uh, punched that out into a circular shape. Same thing for the uh, brown pattern paper, but what I forgot to do was get out the... Tim Holtz ink. And this is just something that I probably use in any card art project um, that I'm making with paper. And I know they have these little dauber duo type things where you can dab onto it with the handle and then dab on, but I'm old school when these just came out, uh, probably in the mid 2000s. <laughs> this is how we ink things. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of at an angle going around things just to give it that aged appeal and I'll do the same with the gothic arch shape as well. Now you could also, if you wanted to make this into a card, you could possibly make the fold right in there and, you know, make it be two pieces. You could adhere it to a larger card. Um, like I said, the possibilities are really endless with these if you just open up your imagination to what you want it to look like. So for the base of this, I'm going to also add, I think, just a little bit of the brown paper. And this wipe might not work out. Sometimes you've got to just adjust things and see what works for you. I really like... Uh, just being able to make things when I can pick that pattern paper ahead of time because to me it makes all the difference in the world if you're crafting because for most of my projects it takes me the longest to pick out what I'm going to use on things. And if I can have it done ahead of time, it makes things go a lot quicker. Now, I'm going to add a little bit more down at the bottom here. And I think I might do a couple swipes Whoop. <laughs> in there. Let me pick that up. Didn't mean to do that. All right, so now we've got that little piece done. And I picked out this um, text. It's kind of a goldish. Um, I'm not a big yellow person in my art, and I'm not a big red or orange. I don't do anything in orange. And I think that sometimes we tend to go to the same color palettes, and sometimes it's really good to kind of make yourself go 
and try the one that you don't normally work with. So today I'm kind of borderline on that because I've got a little bit of yellow, but this embellishment is really what set the whole mood for my Gothic arch, if that makes sense. And so I'm going off of the shades. There's some brown, there's some brown. This gold kind of matches the yellowish in the sunflower. And that's how I'm working. Now with the paper tearing, if you pull towards you, you get one effect. If you pull away from you, you get another effect. So you just have to play around and see what you want to do. I think this one, I'm going to go up here with it. And a lot of times what I do is I'll run the glue. I need a new one of these. I can feel it's a little bit dry. And then I go like that. And I'll come to the back of the arch and just trim it. And that way I know I'm not tearing it wrong. But I'm also going to need to come back and re-ink it. So it's a little bit aged. But I also think I want on this one just a little bit more down here. And I don't really like this edge here. So I'm going to go like that. Tear a little bit away. And then I'll run my glue again that way. That's what I want. Okay, so we've got these two. Now, for this one, I'm most likely going to take this out and not include the little journal tag that's with it. This little girl needs to get some glue on. So I'm going to use some of the repositional stuff and give her a little bit more security. Another glue that I really like that I don't have any to get um, to Joann's is where I have to get it now because I don't know why but Michaels isn't carrying it anymore. It's EK Success Hermafix. Uh, it's the uh, Vario tabs and I started using those when I started scrapbooking. They're really like photo tabs but they work wonderfully for just really making things secure and laying flat. So, all right, now I'm going to steal something from over here because I think it needs it. Sorry about that. Um, well, this is the springtime polka. So we could either do that one to give that more layered look or I could do my postcard. Now these images are, uh, I believe, they're from the Graphics Fairy, I believe. Um, I've had them for years and years and years. Uh, I get, take them into Microsoft Word and then I use this double matte cardstock that you can find at Staples and I print it out onto that so it's hard. That's how I print out my images too. And then um, ink the edges and call it a day. My kitten is trying to come in the studio while I'm doing this. He doesn't like to not be involved in things. He's got to always, you know, if you're cooking in the kitchen, whatever, he's right there. 
and he's a little pistol. I can't let him come in here because he gets very naughty. All right, so I'm going to put these at an angle. Now this has um, like the foam dot on it already. These were bought, I swear, at the dollar store a couple of years ago. I've had tons of them since then. But they're uh, K and Company. And then, I don't know, did K and Company go out of business? Because I just, I don't see their stuff much anymore. And I really, I guess was a big K and Company follower. I really loved their pattern papers and stickers and embellishments and I don't know I'm more of a I guess romantic style scrapbooker card maker I just like things that are old-fashioned looking because I kind of go with the images that I use and that's kind of how I am in real life too I'm kind of just more into antiques and we all have our thing. All right, so on this, what still needs some things. I could put the flower up here, but I think for balance reasons, I want to put the flower down here. And that's where my E6000 is going to come in handy. It's super stinky, so... Just be warned. Uh, sometimes it's good if if you know you're going to do a couple things and you need it, get a little paper plate and like a toothpick. And then you can work quickly because it sets up pretty quickly as well. But um, if you're going to be working with it a lot, please open your window. I think I'm used to smelling it now because I don't. At first, when I started working with it, it used to really give me a headache, but now I'm more used to it. So, okay, so we've got this little girl like this, and I had wanted, to, since I didn't have any words or song or something like that, I had wanted to pick out some dictionary words. I have a lot of uh, ephemera that I try to pick up if I'm ever at the antique mall or if I just see it when out and about. Um, so I keep that in a big box. I have a lot of sheet music, things that I can use in most everything. I'm just not seeing what I want here. So, I think I'll go with... Let me just do this. And I'm going to cut out some words. And a lot of times what I do is I type up, I like to type up uh, song lyrics and then I print them and then I cut them in strips and put them onto the gothic arch that way. In fact, I'm going to backtrack here for a second. This one is a old Nelson Riddle song, When I Grow Too Old to Dream. Uh, but I know the Linda Ronstadt version because she came out with that when I was a teenager, I want to say. And I used to really collect her music and her albums and things. And then this one is, uh, that's probably Enya or Lorena McKennick. And I did it in more of a calligraphy type font. So, I don't know if that helps those that... I use my printer a lot 
for my art. More or less, you know, just importing things into Word and then printing it from there or for example, butterflies. Maybe I find some butterflies online that I really like and then I put uh, them into Word and I can make them all different sizes and then I can put that Staples double matted paper that I was talking to you about in and print them out. All right. So, then we have that. Now, most of my Gothic arches I like to double mat. And I probably shouldn't have glued that button down before I matted it onto the cardstock. Because now I have to worry about the button falling off. But it's a Nancy thing, so oh well. Uh, all right, so this is, uh, I want to say that's called sand. It's a really old piece of Brazil cardstock from scrapbooking years. I have a lot of old cardstock. I haven't bought cardstock in forever because I started as a scrapbooker and I used to have a scrapbook store. Um... But the little guy can't really keep up with what's going on with big competitors. And I don't know what just happened. Okay, so please you get the hang of it. Now I could come in, um, you know, with this type of glue too, but for time's sake... Going this way. Yeah, I need some glue. Can't do another video until I get some more glue. And I just come up a little bit from the edges of the paper. And then what I'll do is I just trim it. Just follow the line the best that you can. And then I'll come back this way as well. Yay. Okay. Now, usually what you should do on your Gothic arch, if you're not mounting it to a card or something, is you want to sign the back with, you give it a title, you give it the date, you sign your name, and, you know, if you exchange them, they're a lot like ATCs, you can exchange them with other artists. You can just get a collection going. You can make a book. Um, and maybe I'll do a video on how to make a gothic arch book as well. But this is a very basic gothic arch. Now, I could also add something up here. Maybe stamping something. Another um, button. You know, something like that. But I just wanted to give a very basic overview of how to make a gothic arch and I hope you enjoyed it there's no right or wrong this is just how I make the gothic arch and I hope that you'll put in the comments what you might like to see have a great day bye this